All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to tie a really simple scud. I leave the shell back off of it. So a lot of people would probably say that it wasn't a scud. In fact, it might even be called something else. But I have never tied the plastic shell back on one, and the trout don't seem to notice. So I don't think that it matters. I start with one of these scud hooks. This is the Daichi is how I believe you say that, style 1120 size 12 curved scud hook. And you're going to need some dubbing. You're going to need, well the beads are optional. These are really small, 564 gold beads, some copper wire. And when you're tying these with the bead, you must pinch the barb down in your vise before you put the bead on because the bead won't fit otherwise. And these tiny little beads are so small. It's probably the hardest part about tying one of these is getting the bead on the hook. You drop them and don't know where they go and you're like, dang it. Paid two bucks for those. Alright, once you get your bead on there, start your thread. And it's important to build up enough thread that the bead doesn't move on you while you're tying in the rest of the material. Go back a little bit farther. And the gold or the copper wire, I like to cut more than I know that I'm going to need. And then what I do is I got my hackle pliers here and I pinch one end of it in the hackle pliers. And then that way I'm tying a few scuds. You'll have more, you don't have to cut enough each time. And it's hard to guess how much you're going to use. Tie in your length of copper wire right along the hook shank. And I always wondered what this little springy dealy here was for. I just use it to hold stuff now. I think that's probably what it's for, right? And I saw another guy do this in a YouTube video I watched where he just nip the little corner of his bag of dubbing like this and then it's easy to draw enough out of there. I always seem to get too much of this stuff. I don't know. You get more than you need and it doesn't take a lot. You get this ugly chunk there. Let's just pull that right out. And I had a lot of trouble when I first started learning how to tie these with getting the dubbing to stay on the hook. I tried buying the wax that's made for this so you wax the thread but once you figure it out it goes pretty easy and just roll it forcefully between your thumb and your index finger and it'll kind of form this little people call it a rope form this rope on there it doesn't have to be super duper even when you're tying with the th or with the copper wire that'll if it's got little chunks in it the wire will pull those in and make it look a little more segmented just wind that on there and you might have to wind it you know between your thumb and your finger a little more that's all right and once you get about here you can try to work the the dubbing off of the thread See, I told you, I always get too much of this stuff on there. Oh, and my hook's moving in the vise. That's no good. Cheap, cheap vise. And once I get to where I'm to this point, I like to 
put a half hitch in there to keep it from coming out if it were to break now everything would come out but the half knit, half hitch will help hold it in a little better I'm going to take your wire and you counter wind it you wind it the opposite on the the opposite way on the hook that you did your dubbing it helps keep it all in place a little more in the trout or small mouth or whatever nip at it their teeth could potentially break the line I've never had it happen I did have it happen with a salmon once and a woolly bugger that I tied No, you just tie in your copper wire. This is a fun part. Just kind of twist it around like that until it breaks off. And you could call that done after you whip finish it. But there's a couple of more things that I really like to do to it to uh, make it a little more buggy get the, some fibers on there that you don't need, clip those take your uh, your bodkin here and you pick out some fibers at the back of it to make it look a little more like antenna because really these things swim backwards in the water so this end is going to represent the head and this end is going to represent the tail Just go in between your copper wire and pick out some dubbing to make it look like the little legs or fins or whatever these things would be swimming with. And like I've said, I've used these for trout, smallmouth, bluegill, and it's hard to imagine improving. I mean, people might say, well, you'd catch more fish with the shell back on there. But I've caught fish back to back on these little things. So I don't think it's necessary. And I pull that out and then right along, about even with the point of the hook, I clip them off. And there you go. That's your very simple scud pattern. Very effective.